My GMT adventure continues in a searing heat wave. Some big mountain passes ahead. And do I have the pace to reach my food resupply in time? It's a Scott on the rocks. Let's dive in. Hello, Hendo here and welcome to part 2 of my John Muir Trail Hike North. In this video I'm starting between Forrester and Glen Pass, hiking from mile 57 to mile 109, days 6 to 9 from Kearsarge Pass signpost to just below Helen Lake near Muir Pass Hut in the Kings Canyon National Park. So on to day 6. Started at the Charlotte Lake sign about 10,770 feet. Many people rejoin the trail here from Onion Valley Resupply Independence, but my plans was one resupply at Muir Trail Ranch, so I would be continuing on contouring around the forest mountain with Charlotte Lake on the left hand side, a tricky undulating boulder section in the morning shade that would lead up to Glen Pass approaching the steeply stepped glacial basins. Here at Ray Lakes, an uh, absolutely stunning spot in the Sierras, so I spent some time having lunch and had a dip in the lower lake. The afternoon then disappeared descending a seemingly never-ending valley to Woods Creek, which the suspension bridge was with the camp for the night, and I met many other hikers there, it was really good to catch up. But unfortunately I lost the slider top of my water bladder in the river while filing up and having a dip. So it's thanks to beekeeper John for his spare sawyer pouch.
On to day 7, I was last to leave camp at 8,500 feet, a uh, low point in the trail, over the wobbly bridge and into the forest following Woods Creek Cascades, then up towards Pinchot Pass, a 3,600 feet ascent. Pinchot Pass was my nemesis on the trail, not so much a technical climb, but one of the toughest days I had. It was very hot, I had no energy, and I was super slow, so I was very late to reach the pass top. And, but however, I really appreciated the geology that day, eventually reaching the barren, rocky heights, different coloured rocks, After descending the other side of Pinchot Pass, uh, the switchbacks down towards Lake Marjorie, I already knew that's where I wanted to camp. It was quite early to camp uh, from the other side of the pass, quite unusual. I'd usually go on quite a few miles after a pass, but this particular day, because it had been so difficult for me, I felt that I really needed to stop and recharge my batteries and dip my feet, but didn't dip my toes in the water. It was ice cold, the lake, washed up and ate and took an early night. There were some other hikers around. It was a great spot, beautiful uh, lake and really nice uh, views over the peaks here. On day eight, I woke earlier than usual and was briskly walking with a protein bar and shake in hand, passing sleeping campers. The trail was kinder in this section, it was meandering, but also the light was incredible pre-dawn. As I walked down past the lake, there was fish rising to the surface and uh, really enjoyed this time. It was a very particular moment in the trail, this I remember as I walked down towards the South Fort Kings River Junction. I would find my way down uh, the switchbacks There'd be one testy crossing here, uh, but it was a low water year, so it wasn't too bad. And uh, then there'd be the long, very long ascent way up towards Mather Pass. But after filling a small creek, a southbounder had said I should look for a rare longhorn sheep in the north side of the pass. And then just after that, I caught sight of a coyote on the rocks over my right shoulder walking past around, eventually behind me, limping with its back right leg, missing. We never lost eye contact. It was an eerie exchange. Would it be an omen for me in the trail? I carried on upwards towards the pass ahead. Skirted a small lake, then steepening switchbacks to the rocky peak. I took many breaks on the way up. Mather passed 12,094 feet.
After the Palisade Lakes, the beautiful meadow flowers, and there was a steep descent down the golden staircase below. It was very tricky with the big pack on and those Palisade Creek waterfall on the left hand side. I was glad to get to the bottom uh, that weaved more gently through the forest in and out of clearings. Uh, there was some mosquitoes down there but eventually found a small clearing under trees to camp and cool down in the creek. This is Lower Palisade Creek. It was about 8,900 feet for camp. It had been a long 19 mile day dropping over 3,000 feet. On day 9, sounds of the river woke me. I broke camp early and had a lovely walk in the woods, soon turning up the middle fork of Kings River, skirting grouse meadow in the shade. It was cool and bug free, a pleasant start to the day. Crossing a bridge, the trail started to climb again, 2,600 feet gain today, steadily surrounded by silver granite peaks in and out of clearings, heading to up. Bishop Pass Junction and there was deer moving across the trail. Onward to follow the river and turning again left up Big Pete Meadow and uh, was searching for camp spots. My target today was as far as I could towards Muir Pass and Leconte Canyon. As my legs faded in the afternoon heat, I stopped here at 10,800 feet, the outlet lake of Middle Fork Kings River, the famous Kings River of California, below Helen Lake and Muir Pass. A few others camped nearby, a sharp peak ahead looked a bit like Paramount Studios Peak. 109 miles in, I was getting closer to halfway in the trail, on target for MTR resupply in just over a days or so time. I wasn't running out of food so much because I had no appetite. This is the end of part two. Although tired by 3 p.m. every day, I was starting to find my trail legs. So join us for the next section. I hope this might be useful to someone. I sure learned from others. Thanks for watching and until next time, Slangeva.